Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, this is Alex, and this is The Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight, originating from the East Coast of the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown is one of our favorite people, and that's why we call out to California, and we make an exception with him where everybody else has a camera so we can see them. Larry Brown <laughs> doesn't, I'm, uh, you still have the flip phone, right? I got the flip, yeah. Uh, does it take pictures? It does take pictures. Oh, really? It does take pictures. And oh. it actually it actually has the ability to get online, but uh, I think the phone is broken because it won't connect, but it's supposed to. No, oh, I see. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, anytime you want a phone... I got one sitting. I got uh, one, at least one sitting here, if not more. You know, got an apple with my name on it. Yeah, and then we could have a. We everybody could see you. Well, that wouldn't be a minus. So. Uh, yeah, no, no, you, you know. I sent you a picture of yourself. What? Well, I don't know when that was. Yeah, taken. that was. Uh, I think a Sue Murphy picture. She really. She released a bunch of those you know, pictures. I don't remember when she took it, but uh, the, she took a bunch of pictures of comics. And uh, I've got something to send to you. I've got uh, someone took a picture of me and you talking at 1986 Comedy Day. Really? Mm-hmm. Son of a bitch. See? And, uh, yeah. Because I uh, I think those, those, those photographs uh, that I got, that I found, that you say Sue Murphy took, she took right. it probably our Frost Amphitheater show. Uh, that could be. Yeah, yeah. Because I seem to recognize there were other photographs that came with it, and I seem to recognize the background and things like that. But um, I, uh, you know, I mean, the, the, you were so young. You were so young. Oh, God. You're probably better looking now. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. You don't... But I have no idea Nothing. what I have no idea what you look like now. Really, I'll send you. Well, you can see me on Facebook, probably. Well, yeah, but it, it it's not a current picture, is it? I got a current picture in there. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. oh, and you have a Facebook account? Yeah, you didn't know that. <laughs> no, I'm surprised. <laughs> I know. I'm surprised. How do you put stuff on it? Well, I can't. I have to. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know how to put a picture online. So. See, I do Pearl. He does it on his iPhone. I do Kravitz. He does it from his computer. You know. So all these other people, you're the only one that I run a slide that says Larry Bubbles Brown when we're doing. I got to learn. I wish I knew how to do some of this stuff. Well, it's not that complicated. You know, I have things I, I have things I'd like to put on. I have a I have a letter from John F. Kennedy. I'd like to put a picture of that online. See, I, oh yeah, you, all you would have to do is take a picture with your iPhone and put it onto your page. You know, it, it's just you, you're just you just. I think I think now I honestly believe the only reason you're resisting all of this, you're afraid of ruining your reputation. <laughs> am I, <laughs> well, am I right? Uh, yeah. there be, there's got to be some block why I'm not going through it. You know, I mean, what would we have to talk about now if we weren't talking about the fact that you are so technologically inept? <laughs> it's part of my charm. I guess. It, it's, I'm a Luddite. I, I, I could tell you it's the new way of communicating, and then you're saying, well, I don't want to communicate with people. <laughs> well, that's kind of true, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, what do you what do you think now? We have a new president. You know, mm -hmm. do you feel a little calmer now that Trump's gone? That we don't have this Trump fatigue mm -hmm. every day? I don't know. I think we've gone from I think we've gone from mad to sad. <laughs> well, I I just you know I uh, uh, I'm 
I have to say I'm getting a little tired of hearing from Biden every day with his conferences. Just shut the fuck up, do the job, leave us alone, and tell us when, you know, the apocalypse is coming. Exactly, yeah. Just... You know, I, 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 I find this uh, unacceptable. <laughs> you know, so... Uh, uh, but it, it's, uh, it's okay. Anyway, uh, the, you know, Larry has, uh, usually what, what do you do? Do you go to an almanac or something? I go to an almanac. I go, I do go online sometimes, all that, but, but I had a question. I want, I figure you would know the answer. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, the Beatles had their big uh, concert tour in 1966. Yeah. And uh, I was shocked. Do you know how long those shows were? Uh, how long the shows were? Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. St- ask me that question again. How long did the Beatles play in those uh, big tours? I would say, okay, I hosted a Beatles. Um, or maybe I didn't host it, but I, but I was certainly our station uh, hosted it. And um, uh, I was at it in Houston, Texas. And I'm telling you now that I know it was 45 minutes. Uh, when I read it was 30. Really? I, yeah, I thought it did. was 45, but you may be right. And they, they were shockingly short, and they, they did have a, uh, they had some uh, bands, they had some other bands on their show, too, which I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember who the other bands were, you know. Uh, it might have been Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs. I don't know. Uh Someone with the Rascals. The Rascals. Well, that would be that would be the little ra- the the Rascals, uh, and they were a very famous band at the time. You know. Yeah, I looked this up last night, and then they did a show at Shea Stadium that had fifty five thousand people, mm-hmm. and they grossed six hundred thousand dollars, which means the tickets were barely over ten dollars. Yeah. And the, at the time, that was the biggest gross of a show in history. Wow. Wow. Jeez. That's and they cool. said the, uh, did you do it at the Astrodome? Uh, we did, no, we did it at the Houston Coliseum. Okay. Well, they, they said that the noise was so loud that the, you said you see cops standing there with their hands over well, their ears. Well, supposedly the, the crowd was screaming so loudly that the Beatles said they were just mouthing the music. They yeah. Were, they weren't even singing. You know, they didn't have to. You couldn't hear them if they did. So nobody knew that they really didn't get a concert at all. Yeah, but, uh, uh, but no, I, I, well, I, you might be right at 30 minutes. Uh, I know it was, I know it was, it was short, but it wasn't short for the day. I mean, in those days, the average concert was 30 minutes, right? Mm hmm. Uh, but then, uh, then as years went on, I think what's an average concert now? Two hours, something like that. Yeah, and then Springsteen do three or four, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, and I remember that was the uh, time that Ringo stepped on my hand. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, what happened was I was had, I was I was standing backstage while it was going on in the back of the stage, and I had my hand on the steps to kind of keep myself a right or whatever and not get tired from standing. And uh, they, when they finally do their last song, they never said goodbye. They just put their mu- instruments down, ran off stage and into an armored truck. Yeah, so they are delivered in an uh, Wells Fargo armored truck. Yeah, and <laughs> as they were coming down the stairs, Ringo stepped on my hand. <laughs> Years later, when I interviewed him, I reminded him that he had stepped on my hand and he apologized. So, you know, but I mean, uh, oh, it was it was amazing. I mean, they just they just rushed them off. I mean, they didn't even say goodbye. So nobody knew the concert was over. And also, you know, when you go to see concerts now, they have all these huge amps and uh, amplification and, and the sound equipment and so on. Do you know what the Beatles had? Those little amps that you plug a guitar into. Wow. N- not these big, huge amps that fill an auditorium. These were just these little, you know, the regular amps they probably had when they were playing in those clubs in the uh, 
Rotterbaum or whatever the place was. He was Rotterdam. Playing for. <laughs> Uh, but it's amazing that how did the, why did they become so huge? It's incredible. Well, my argument was, if it wasn't the Beatles, it would have been somebody else. That it was just time and ready to happen. Okay, uh, and it was them because it was them. What what can we say? You know, I mean, I wish I could say there's an answer to that question, but I just think that they were zeitgeist. They were the tempo of the times. And they were just, it was just time for that kind of thing to happen. Does that make sense? Yeah, and they, it would have been somebody else probably. Well, I mean, why did Elvis Presley happen? Elvis Presley was a product of his times. Then about 10 years later, you had the Beatles, okay? And they were a product of their times. By the way, you say, well, who was prior to Presley? About 10 years earlier, you had Sinatra. You know, as, as uh, you know, but, but the thing that that uh, Elvis represented was uh, Elvis was the first emergence of what we call teen culture, where there was actually uh, teens listened, and it was music for them, and they congealed as a group and as a culture. Prior to that, their culture was uh, when you were a kid. You, you dress like a kid, and then there was no teenage period. As soon as you became a teenager, you started dressing like your parents. Mm -hmm. you remember, I, mean, I don't know if you remember that, but if you go back and look at it, you know. So what happened was this was the first time with, with, when Presley came along where there was actually a dress and a music and, you know, even movies that were made to appeal to that group between, uh, oh, I don't know, 12 and, and 18, uh, you know, but you, you were either a kid or you were an adult. You were nothing in between. So thank you very much. That's my lecture tonight on yeah, culture. But it's just incredible to see these uh, teenage girls literally getting hysterical. Uh, yes, and supposedly the, the legend is one agent of Frank Sinatra's remembers going to a Sinatra concert with the Bobby Soxers, you know, mm -hmm. these girls that would scream, as he's saying. Uh, and he said you could smell urine because they were Ooh. pissing their pants. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, he said you could smell urine as you walked by all these girls. Good Lord. <laughs> but there, there, there is some, there are some stories that they actually paid girls to scream. So that the rest of them would scream, right? Okay. You know. So, that, you got another question for me, quickly? Yeah. Well, the uh, the person that the uh, non musical people that kind of got that uh, type of fame were Martin and Lewis. Yes, they got you. They were if you uh, if you get a chance, folks, just go to YouTube and go look up Martin and Lewis and look for. A, a video of them or films of them outside the uh, at the Paramount Theater out of their window to the crowd below and you would think if you just showed the crowd below these were people trying to wait for the Beatles yeah you know I mean they were that big they were that much of a sensation um, but they weren't a rock group and that was the strange part about it but yet they appealed they you know obviously if you're going to have crowds of people down there they're going to be kids cuz who's got time to go wait outside the Paramount Theater and and you know Martin and Lewis were waving at them and they were all screaming and it would if you just eliminated Martin and Lewis you'd think the Beatles were kind of looking out the window exactly yeah so I mean, uh, so you see, comedy can be. Uh, a, and I think, to a certain extent, I think Steve Martin almost reached that kind of mania when he popped. In kind of, shows. yeah, yeah. I saw one of his concerts where he played. The reason he stopped doing comedy is he. I saw him at the uh, the Nassau Coliseum, and they. He said, when it got that big, it just wasn't fun anymore. It wasn't comedy. Yeah. You know, comedy is not meant to be. <laughs> but comedy is not a stadium event. All right. No. And uh, he said, I that's when I decided I go to movies, you know, and he never he never really did. I don't think he ever went back to stand up again. 
Uh, no, he he quit at the top and did. Uh, but he also wasn't your traditional stand-up. I mean, he came out of being a writer for television. Okay, you know, and he just came up with this act, and it became sensational. Uh, and uh, and it was a great act too. It was a very funny act. But yeah, anyway, great, yeah. Hey, hey, listen, uh, it, it's amazing when I talk to you. Time just flies by. Not like yeah, we're having talking about all that. Not like. <laughs> Not it, like this is great. Not like we can say, uh, boy, how time flies when you're having fun. Because with Larry Bubbles Brown, you never have fun. No, you know, not in the traditional sense. But go listen to him on uh, Amazon, because his his that comedy thing he did is just terrific. It is just hilarious. That's I'll it. have to listen to it. <laughs> it's the best you've ever been. Wow, that's great. But that doesn't say much because you sucked before. Anyway, yeah, that's true. <laughs> hey, let's talk again next week. Okay, Larry? We'll do, Alex. Larry Thank Bubbles you. Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And a good friend, Larry Bubbles Brown, folks. We love Larry. Everybody loves Larry. Everybody loves Larry. Oh, hello. How are you? God, I'm tired tonight. I, I took a I took a Xanax last night to go to sleep, and then what happens to me is I'm tired for the whole next day. So what can I say? But I take then I take that other pill, and it makes me feel good all day long. So I'll take that other pill tonight. Go to sleep. Ah. You know when when your whole life is dependent on what pills you're taking, you know you begin to you know. Mm, Anyway, uh, let me see here. Anything happening that I should uh, I should uh, let you know? Oh, I'll tell you what happened. I uh, I wrote the city of New York. Okay, I wrote the city of New York this blazing letter about you know how bad the service was when we went to go get our our shot that we had to wait for two hours in line uh on a rather cold day uh that these are old people waiting for their shots and they don't you know it's, it's not good to have them standing out there for two hours and then i said that you you know they said be there on time but you know then you weren't on time and we were two and a half we were two hours late in getting our injection and that uh, I, then I complained about certain things about the way it was being handled because I said if people are not computer literate, this could be a very difficult proposition trying to sign up for this thing. And I, I wrote them this whole list of particulars, and they send me back. I, I didn't get a reply for a while. And then they send me back a, a, a form letter. Thank you for your email to Mayor de Blasio. Our New York City vaccine for all campaign is the largest blah, 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 blah. Goes on, tells us about you can use this, and you can call this number, and you can do that, and you can do this. Did not answer or attend to any of my questions. You would think they would have one form letter that goes, uh, because people would complain about such things. Well, we're sorry for you uh, being... Uh, your life being disrupted this way, and we're trying to fix the whole thing. And it could still be a form letter, but at least a form letter that somehow answers to, or, or tends to what you ask them to do. This is what's so screwed up about New York and about New York State and their handling, not of the COVID crisis, although early on the governor did screw up and he's being called to account for it now. Um, but, uh, uh, but he's pretty well handled it pretty well uh, ever since. And I was absolutely enamored with him and the way he was handling it until now. And now they've just been doing a terrible job of it. And I hear about people, you know, in other states, uh, uh, like out in California who, who say, Hey, I just walked in, I walked out, got the shot, boom, me in my arm. I had an appointment for it Did it right on time, left. You know, I had to sit there for 15 minutes, you know, to make sure I didn't pass out or something like that. And I, I you know, it, it, but then I, you come to New York and here's this whole thing where we had to wait outside. And then they didn't give me the right information on how to sign up for my second appointment. And my second appointment was like for 38 days later rather than 28 days later. And I did it right. 
you know, I did it with somebody there who said, oh, the earliest date you can do it is on the 27th of February. Meanwhile, Shecky goes out to his place, and he gets it on the 25th, and he just got his shot yesterday, okay? So, I mean, uh, all these kind of things going on. I mean, I've looked it up, though, and um, uh, the, the CDC says if you do it before um, uh, 42 days, you're fine. And they don't know if you aren't fine after 42 days. It's just that the uh, uh, it hasn't been tested beyond that to see it's it's uh, how good it is or bad it is. Then I go and I look at what England is doing, and they're doing 12 weeks. They're saying 12 weeks till this next shot. Don't worry, you ain't got no problem. You know. So I don't know. So, I, but I just it's just it's just they're, they're just handling it so badly. It just uh, makes me want to vomit okay anyway uh let's see here we only have about three people waiting to come on but what the hell that's a, that is a citizen panel uh, uh, I, uh ideally it's not a full citizen panel but it is a citizen panel and there it goes and uh, brian neary is out there waiting to come in so then we have an additional person and uh, let's say hello to our uh, our panel hello charlie hello jeff hello Thanks. Uh, Trucker Steve, and of course your sidekick Rocky. Oh, it's now sidekick. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, of course Brian Neary out there in uh, California as well. How are you all doing this evening? Good. Pretty yeah. good. Uh, and and uh, Charlie, how are we doing this evening? Oh, uh, we lost another thirty six hundred people today. Jeez, Almighty! What is it ever going to stop? Eventually, not. somehow, yeah. either we're all going to die or... it It's looking more like this is that thing out of science fiction movies. Really, every day I, I, yep. I see, yep. you know, they, they go, well, now the South African strain, eh, let, let's see, the Moderna... Well, well, the 3,600 people today. Jeez, almighty, oh, what is it? Wait, 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 wait. Who, who's got their... Somebody's got... Uh, some, somebody's got somehow. their... Somebody's got their... Oh, oh, well, we just lost Jeff. Well, it was Jeff. <laughs> it was, it was, it was Jeff. obviously Jeff because it stopped. Um, no, I mean, it's just, uh, let me see. Here comes Alan. Here comes Alan. Uh, and, yeah, we reached uh, 500,000 by the middle of February. Yeah, God. But, uh, you know, it's kind of like, that. it's a science fiction movie. Okay. Oh, now what happened? What happened? Everything froze up here. Uh -oh. Everything froze up. Hmm. I'm fine over here. Son of well, a I'm bitch. fine too, y'all. I am. I am completely. It, I, I, Alan came in and Alex left. Alex is froze. Yeah, uh, it's this, Alan. Well, somehow this everybody machine, else is fine. Oh, Alex now now it's back. Now it's back. Now okay. okay. Well, Alex okay. never froze for o me. OBS is now okay. If you're watching this show in the aftermath of the reason we went blank or something like that uh, and then obs reconnected is because uh something happened on this side i don't know what it was it could it could have could have been the internet it could have been something like that but we had a problem let me just make sure i'm going out uh uh, uh there uh, well, wait a minute hold on a second uh wait a minute where is it i'm trying to look at where where are we uh I don't, here. Uh, hmm. I'm trying to find a, uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, let me, let me get rid of something here and then I will redo it. Put myself back on. Okay. Bring Some myself bunch, back yeah. up again. Oh man. This is like, you know, this is ridiculous. It's so, so absurd. I see you. Huh? That's all that's important. I know. I know we're fine now. Uh, mm -hmm. let me see here. Let me admit them. I, I don't know what, what the problem was. Okay. Uh, I can't, I've, I've got to get this thing, uh, going back. I've got to get my Chrome up so I can see that we're actually going out. Okay. Um, Charlie, what's your shirt saying? Yeah. But I found this humorous. <laughs> uh, I found this humorous. It okay. looks like a sperm going up toward the skin. <laughs> Yeah, in case you people said it's a we, humorous. In case of some of you people out there, we went out or something like that. It, 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 well, oh no! 
We got entertainment tonight. Hey, hey, folks, no. folks, we went out for a couple of minutes, but the fact is that considering what's going on now, we should have stayed off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, know. oh, you don't like my playing? Hmm? No. Yeah. Anyway, there we go. We're, we're, I've been we're, practicing. I think, I, I think we're... Really? Really? <laughs> When <laughs> Burp, Albert oh, oh. and the Tijuana Brass. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we're 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 okay. We're we're up and running. I'm sorry about that, folks. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but something froze up here, and uh, I don't know what it was or for what reason it was, but it froze up. It could have very well been my my internet connection may have gone down. I don't know if it was that. I can't figure out what it was. I'm not gonna no. try and figure out what it is. Doesn't matter. I get tired of this. I just want. How you one doing, night. Alex? Huh? I'm, I'm, How you doing? Suck. Wait a minute. Hold Don't on. Ask him. Hold on a second. There. Thank I'm, you. No, no. Uh, there we go. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, there we yeah. go. I'm, I wonder who sent this to me. I don't know. It could <laughs> be Maybe Joe Biden did. Hmm? No. All I know is this came by Amazon today. You know, they can't deliver any of my other stuff. The coffee doesn't come or the whatever doesn't come, but you right? said you said ten dollars or more. And I know I paid more ten dollars for the hat or more. And so I sent you a hat because we're getting tired of your other hat. Wait, wait a minute. Who's got audio on? Oh, audio, your audio is on, Jeff. Yeah. Are your YouTube on? Yeah. Something in the background. Mute it's yourself. Your YouTube. And I know I paid ten dollars. Mute yourself, before. Jeff. And so I sent you a hat because. <coughs> well, I'll mute you. It's your YouTube. Yeah, it is you, Jeff. No, it isn't. I don't know. Not me. Yeah. No, 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 Jeff. And, Je and, 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 and Jeff, when he when he hit the side, what you do, folks, when you call the program, although none of you are going to, so fuck you. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, By the way, when I you like call, your hat. yeah, when you call the program, please turn off your YouTube, okay? Because that's what then comes through sometimes, and that can be a problem. Okay. I only did that once and I yeah. learned. Yeah. But anyway, so I, I don't know what froze up here, but it unfroze. So that's the first time that's ever happened to me. Hmm. But there's a first for everything technologically, you know. The virus caused it. I'm, I, you know, I'm just, it, I, when you're doing this kind of thing here, see, like all these other people that do podcasts don't know the first thing about computers. So they go out and hire some people to come in and run the whole operation for them, and they got to worry about the technology. I do everything here, you know. When I switch from like uh, um, uh, myself to uh, to the Zoom panel like this, I do that myself. You know, I'm doing that all myself. When I when this thing comes on every night, it's because I get it to come on, and the reason it uh, has a you know um, a uh, a thing that that uh, uh, sends the signal out to you from YouTube uh, is because I flip a switch, you know. So that's that's the story. And can I make a comment? What? Can I make a comment? Take oh. your hat off and straighten it out. It looks like it looks like it's smashed in. What looks like it's smashed in? The, the Biden it? part. There you go. Now you got it. Sorta. Of. Well, how was it smashed in? I don't know. Just like, yeah, yeah. the the bi is it kind of crushed in? No, it's better now. No, you're just, fine. It's just the way my head is balanced. Oh, yeah. well, I have the same problem. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'll wear this all the time. However, this is my favorite hat. This one. I know. My my mm -hmm. Chinese military hat. Uh, by the way, I saw a documentary on uh, uh, the BBC did. And very good about the uh, about the Wuhan crisis in China and how they handled the whole thing, mm -hmm. and it and and the politics behind it and you know what the World Health Organization knew and so on and so forth. If they ever show it over here, folks, you should watch it. It was really, really spectacular. And well, uh, channel. 
Hmm? What channel was it on? Uh, well, this is on the BBC in England. How did I get it? Well, I won't tell you that. That's my little secret. Okay. okay. Uh, but uh, if you know how to get BBC programming, go right ahead and do it. You know, one, 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 well, one way you can do it is you get, if you have a VPN, have your VPN go on in from use the uh, London VPN, yeah. and then you can watch any of their programs on their website. Absolutely. But you can't do that if you're watching it from here. But anyway, uh, it was just a spectacular documentary about it because it's all, you know, it had something that a lot to do with the Chinese attitude about this sort of thing. And it was almost similar to Trump's in a strange way in that they go, well, we don't want to panic the public. Okay, so we're going to deny everything until we have the facts. And by the time they had the facts, it was too late, you know. Um, but uh, they talk about that wet market and, you know, with how that's where they said that it seemed to come from there. It, it, whether it, it, it didn't come from a bat exactly. It came from something else that the bat had something to do with, like some meat product or whatever. And uh, uh, th that's, that's where it uh, came from. But uh, for, for two months they were saying there were only 42 cases when there were hundreds and hundreds of cases. You know, but it's but, um, hmm? didn't they didn't they get control of it by just locking everybody down? Oh, they locked everybody down in Wuhan. Nothing could come into Wuhan, and nothing could leave Wuhan until they knew that it was safe uh, to do so. But so they got it. So, it, so Wuhan now is probably the safest place in the world. Well, it could be, but the fact was that it, they didn't lock it down fast enough because some of those people got out of there. Went yeah. to England, went to Europe, then it yeah. hit Europe, and then it came here, you know, yeah. to the West Coast. It showed up in, uh, where did it show up? In Seattle, I think, uh, first uh, here in this country. Although they think, yeah. they, they think there may have been a case earlier than that, maybe as far back as October. Well, didn't they say there was one in California before? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah they, there was one yeah. in California. Yeah. Around San Francisco? Yeah. Santa Clara. Yeah. That's like the next thing. But, but, but when you think, <laughs> when you see, see that this whole thing started with just a handful of people getting it, yep. and then how many people in the world got it? Man, oh Over 100 man. million now. Huh? Over 100 million. Over 100 million. I mean, really, really, really scary. Just scary. And, and that's the thing with this with this virus, and that's the worry about the South African variant is that they think it's a little bit more explosive than that. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. What the hell? You know, by the time I get my second shot, they're going to go, well, that one doesn't work. You know? <laughs> Got to uh, take the Johnson & Johnson one shot. Huh? Johnson & Johnson is saying yeah. we the can Johnson & Johnson one shot. You know, I wouldn't want the old Johnson & Johnson, would you? Well, it's it's less percentage. It's, uh, it, they say it may be as uh, low as 65 percent. Yeah. yeah. Effective. Yeah, well, um, what do I need with 65 percent effective? I'll get the other 35 percent. Okay. They're all catching it and beating it and not be immune to it. Yeah, but I mean, I, I what I would like, uh, you know, I mean, I, I want the one that's, you know. Yeah. You've, you, you know, 68 percent is a lot better than nothing. Well, zero. what I read, what, what I read tonight on a on a on a CDC site was that there is a feeling that the Moderna and the Pfizer, even on the first shot, after several weeks, afford you upwards to eighty percent protection. That all the uh, all the second shot does is take you to the ninety five, but eighty percent, you know. If, uh, supposedly after about three weeks, after about, uh, I think it was 12 days, you're with uh, Moderna, you're at 50%. But it does keep increasing. So, so the Moderna, and the, the thing that I know is the Moderna, and you can do the one shot, it'll take you to 80%, like you said. But what, what what's happened with vaccines like this, mm -hmm. and the shingles vaccine, why they give you two, is because the first one wears off in a month or two and then you have no protection so yeah yeah so you know <clears> that's but, why the second shot but all i'm saying is that uh that uh, uh it, it, well here we go talking about 
I know. COVID again mm-hmm. tonight. We don't I, I know. watched the Go Go's, the Go Go's documentary on oh, Showtime. Good? That's a good that one. Good. It's, that's I good. Saw that. Yeah, it's very good. Okay. Who are the Go Go's? Who are the Go Go's? Who are the Go Go's? The Go Go's? Only the greatest girl band of all time. <laughs> Never. Ever. Ever. In the room. Wow. Of course, I'll have to Google that. There haven't been that many girl bands, however. So, Where were you, know. you in the 80s? Where were you in oh. the 80s, Alan? Um, here in Fremont, but they weren't here. <laughs> really? They're a California band. Southern though. California, yeah. Wow. I know what girls I was like. watching Sean Cassidy. Hmm? I'm kidding. Well, it's a sealed. Yeah. No, I mean, what I liked about, uh, I really liked uh, the Go-Go's, because I liked the way they kind of liked it. It was, nah, 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 nah. It was, it was the kind of music they too. did. It was great. What about yeah, the Spice they... Girls? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Spice Girls. They didn't play any instruments. Oh, the Spice they, Girls. They also... The Spice Girls sucked. Compared to the Go Go's, I'm oh, sorry. Man, bangles, the Listen, Bangles. No, the, the serious. The, the 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 Go Go's were a girl band who played, and I'm using the term girl, yes, because that's what we called them. But they were a girl band who all played their own instruments. Mm-hmm. With the yeah. with the Spice Girls, they didn't play shit. They just looked good and had tits, you know, and that was it. And that's all there needs to be for you, right, Alex? Looking no, good no, no. If I'm going to listen to music, you know, if I'm going to listen to music, uh, I want it to be good, okay? And I thought they were damn good. And, but it helps and, that they look good and have tips. And this documentary really shows how good they were. You know, another good. And, and what? Well, go ahead. It's amazing how many how many pictures they have from back then when they're in the punk scene. Okay. You know. Uh, it's it's cool because of the technology that everybody has phones, but when you start doing these documentaries, they actually have a lot of footage from them, either at shows or, or playing early yeah, shows. Yeah, when, when they were like just playing garages and stuff. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And, and they didn't even, they really didn't even know how to play instruments, you know, they just kind of <laughs> learned it on the on the fly, you know. Yeah. Kind of like the Partridge family. Come on. Well, they're playing. I think we still have to get the different. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Partridge, Partridge, Partridge family had the greatest backup band in the world, which was called the uh, the Wrecking Crew. You know? Yeah. yeah I mean, well, well, the Partridge family wasn't a band. Yeah. They were a no, mythical no. band on a TV show. Yeah. Right. And, right. and I mean, uh, I mean, you could even go back to the Monkees. The Monkees, when they first started out, were, were basically just a bunch of actors. And I think one of them was a musician. Yeah. Yeah. I think and, Nesmith might have been his musician. Well, Nesmith. Nesmith was the musician in the group. Yeah. Um, well, uh, um, I was watching that documentary. Well, Peter about Tork the, uh, also played. I met him at a comic show, Alex Peter Tork. He was actually pretty nice. He was at one of the big Apple cons. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I didn't know what to say to him. Though. What do you say to the guy? You say, when, when, well, you don't say anything got... to him now. He's dead. But you know, That's true, yeah. But he wanted like fifty dollars for an autograph. I just had to walk by, and I was like, "I'm not." Him 50 bucks. <laughs> what, were you, what were you saying, uh, Sparky? Oh, uh, when when uh, he's Sparky when the Beach Boys were recording one of their records. Uh, the drummer, what's his name? Br- not Brian Wilson, but the other one. He shows up, and and uh, they just go, "You know, we don't even need you. Just, just you know." So you you can just kind of sit over on the side. <laughs> Who the Beach Boys? Yeah, the Beach Boys, really? the drummer, uh, Dennis Wilson. De- Dennis oh. Wilson played drums fine. Yeah, I know, but but the Wrecking Crew was on the records. It was the Wrecking no, Crew. Uh, the Wrecking Crew, no, the Wrecking Crew didn't do Beach Boys. They did a lot yeah, of people. Did. I don't believe well, they, they did. did. I they don't. Did. I don't believe they did. They may have done some backup. Yeah, that's but what I mean. But they didn't do the main the instrument. Records. They didn't do the main instrumentation. I mean, that was on the records. That, they did. No, it was Brian I mean, Wilson. Dennis Wilson was on drums. You know, Brian, and then there was, there was, there was, there was, then they had to fill in the more of the background and then they would go hire the wrecking crew to do that. Yeah. yeah. You know, but, uh, the wrecking crew were a group of musicians in LA who played on almost every session. Uh, yeah. and they contained what are considered to be a group of the finest musicians you could lay your hands on anywhere. And they yeah. played on the backgrounds to a lot of records that, that were, were, uh, they, they, you know, they were the they were the main impetus in the background for the for the music, um, but the monkeys weren't much doing much of anything. They they did learn how to play instruments so they could go on stage and do their act, uh, but um, 
There's a great documentary. Also, mm -hmm. this one's on, uh, I believe it's also on HBO Max. The one you're talking about, Brian, was on Showtime? Showtime. Yeah, yeah Showtime. Uh, but on HBO Max is the uh, documentary on the Bee Gees. And, oh, I saw that one. I liked it. Yeah, it's phenomenal. And I'll tell you why. Because yeah. I couldn't stand the Bee Gees. And I completely, <laughs> I like when they existed, I completely ignored them. I didn't care uh, what they did or how they did it. They just didn't seem very good to me. And um, and they had that high voice and everything. I watched this documentary, and after it was over, I went, they were greater than I ever gave them credit for. you know. And they, they wrote, after they yeah. no longer were big themselves, they wrote yeah. songs for other people that mm -hmm. were, you know, major hits these guys were just very very talented and they kept <clears throat> reinventing themselves yeah, they did a duet with streisand one time i remember that they did a lot of stuff right you yeah. didn't realize how much they really did yeah island islands in a stream that one dolly parton and kenny rogers song they they wrote that was theirs i mean they they, really they, big, yeah. they wrote uh, they wrote uh, uh, literally dozens upon dozens of songs for other people mm -hmm. after uh, they were through and uh, it was, uh, you know, it's a great documentary if you get a chance. I mean, I, we, Marjorie and I were watching going, oh, we don't want to watch the Bee Gees. Well, let's it's just good. watch a little finish. bit of it, okay? And before we knew it, we had watched both parts of it. And uh, we thought it was, we went, gee, we looked at each other and said, I didn't realize they were that good. So it was an egg shot, Alex. The guy in the, in the, did you know the radio disc jockey who did that whole disco stinks? Did he just get a name for himself? Like he was that like a stunt? Remember they were showing it where they were smashing the records? Um, or something? I know the program director. I'm trying to remember his name now because he's a friend of mine and I can't remember his name, obviously, because I'm losing it. Uh, but he he came up with that idea, and then he had a disc jockey do it, and he's always felt rather guilty about it because what it did do was ruin the BG's career. Yeah, I thought, yeah, I felt bad for them because they yeah. had, you know, they had their own niche. It was it, almost it, like they were kind of scoring. Yeah, it's in there, and it's all about them them doing that, you know, and um, uh, you know that 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 was the thing that suddenly this was after Saturday Night Fever and everything, the good. thing that finally killed their career, uh, and they had a hard time selling records and even getting record labels. So they went to writing songs for other people at that point. Uh, but um, this friend of mine, who is a program director, uh, who thought up the idea and then had a disc jockey at his station do it, uh, says has told people that he knows that he feels very guilty about having done it. You know that he he feels that it was unwarranted, and that really they were better than that and they didn't deserve what they got. You know, so that's the story with uh, the. What what did you think of cousin Brucey? Do you ever remember him? Don't make me puke. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I don't know. I just read an article about the guy. He just got hired. He's like in his nineties. I don't know. Brucey keeps surviving. Uh, I, uh, I I knew Brucey. I've known Brucey. He, I worked with him at at, uh, at uh, Sirius XM. Uh, he never. He made. He was bigger in publicizing himself than he ever was in reality. There were a lot of other disc jockeys at the time, like Murray the K and so on, who were certainly far more popular than he ever was. And the only reason why people look upon him as some kind of broadcast icon is because he's still alive and he's still doing radio somewhere. Okay? He's in New York now doing WABC. Yeah, well, that's almost like not doing radio at all. But, okay. you know... Uh, yeah, WABC's got uh, Giuliani doing a talk show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so why watch it? Why, why, why wouldn't? Why watch what? It's the the talk show with Giuliani. It, no, it's, it's not. You it's don't already, watch it. You hear it. Oh, sorry. There is an advantage there. You don't have to look at him. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Good you know, point. He has a he has a face made for radio, as do right. I. As a matter of fact, so. You know, um, uh, but, uh, you know, you know, uh, I, I, uh, funny thing about, how, how can I describe this? Brucey gets a job at Sirius XM, right? I'm there already. And, and they give him a studio to do it out of. And he's doing it like once a week or something. 
And he goes in there and he just plasters pictures of himself everywhere in the studio. He only uses it once a week, but he plasters pictures everywhere. And he's got pictures facing outward. So you can, because we have these floor to ceiling glass windows in each studio. So they put all, his wife went in and put all these pictures of him over the years. And the only thing is, is that he's got a nice big shock of hair. Not one inch of it is his own. Okay. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. And what happens is there are pictures of him with his, you know, with the Beatles and his hair is thinning. And then with somebody else and his hair is thinning more. And then all of a sudden the picture recently and he's got this big shock of hair. Who the fuck does he think he's fooling? (laughs) You know, if you are going to wear a wig, then don't ever show a picture of yourself without the wig. Because people are going to go, you know, you don't grow hair like that. What's that? Oh, that's... So that night that they, that they tore up all those albums on the arena, that's yeah. what they were. They were at Oakland Coliseum, and I was there. <clears throat> really? This is this is the program from Oakland. Oh, wow. 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 My parents cool. went to all the concerts. Bob Dylan and the ticket stub still there from Oakland Coliseum. $10 oh. to see him. Who's wow. that, Dylan? Yeah, okay. And you know where we were? That's you know where they used to go all the time, Alex? You know that is a Circle Ooh. Star. Oh, oh I love that. San thing. Carlos. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so Circle Star, they saw them, uh, Nat King Cole. And nice. Oh, wow. I got Harry Balafani, all these old programs. Wow. That's cool. That's you could probably sell those. Tony, you want to buy these? You want to buy them, Tony? Come on, man. I'll sell you the whole lot. I'm really not into that, but those are worth money. I was on they Etsy. I've seen some of the... Uh, a dealer I know selling ticket stubs from the seventies. I don't. I'm not into that. But he was getting like fifty dollars a pop when we had him for sale. I mean, I know nothing about that. But they're definitely worth money. The ticket stubs. You know, I was talking to uh, Michael Snyder about you yesterday, Tony. Oh me? Yeah, because we were doing this thing, and afterwards we started talking about the fact that he's he's got a lot of his comic books in storage, and he's got about twenty five thousand comic books. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow. And I said, uh, I said, well, you. You know, it's got to be worth something. You oh, know? yeah. And then I try to figure out how I could get you in touch with him to decide, but there's no way you can get out there to look at the, yeah. at the yeah. comic books, you know. But, I mean, there there's a lot there. That, oh, there is money. Yeah, they, if they're old, they're worth money. Yeah, but, I mean, he's. He, he, I'm sure, knowing the way he collected stuff, Did he just uh, it, 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 if it isn't... If if as as a total it isn't worth a ton, there's individual stuff I'm sure that's worth a fortune, yeah. you know. And did he like did he? I wonder how he kept them. Probably in boxes. Yeah, I said, did you keep them in like you know? And he says no. I actually bought the books and the read them, and then books? I then I put them in a box. Oh, so then he's got good stuff. Yeah. So they're probably in pretty good condition. But here's what I don't get about mint condition. They say it's mint condition if it comes in an, in in a packaging, a Isinglass packaging, right? Yeah. And it's never been opened. All right. I and mean, you go, so you're going to buy this comic book. You're going to pay, you, yeah. uh, you're going to pay 500 bucks for it to Tony. And then you're never going to open it up and read it. I mean, when so what me, use is yeah. a fucking comic book if you can't read it? Right. I mean, you can buy it. Like, that's really false. You know where it comes down to? I mean, you can buy something. Like I have stuff off the rack, say, that I bought years ago. Mm-hmm. And you had to take it off the rack because back then I wasn't doing mail order to order my books. So I would go to the forest hills, go to the store. I would hang out there all day, actually. And he would let me cherry pick the books because he knew I was a fanatic, the guy in the store. But even when I went home, like, say, my Spider-Man 300, I knew I bought it in forest hills. And now that book I send in to get graded, which is the first Venom, I never read the book. I know that. I had multiple copies mm-hmm. and I sent one into CDC and I got a nine six. Now when nine six on a grading scale is a near mint plus is a nine point six. To get a near mint mint is a nine eight. Now I was I mean I've gotten nine eights on books I just pulled off the shelf. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. You gotta you know what it is. But they immediately the threw them into like an envelope, right? And sealed. Yeah, them. but you know what you gotta do, Alex? And I'm and a lot of people can't do this. I'm very good at it. I'm not trying to brag. I could look at a book when I'm pulling it off, and mm-hmm. if I see any type of imperfection, mm-hmm. I would put it right back. So I was always kind of looking like for the best copy. You're not going to get it all, but I was always looking for something that was didn't have any many imperfections to it. Yeah, 
Yeah. So in Sounds comic good. books, did they give like a piece of bubble gum like they did with baseball? No, no, no. How about they had ball? inserts in there and stuff, but they never. That was the tops card you think, you know? Wow. You know that is. You know that uh, is. Ricky that, Mark Twain. Mark Twain tonight. Yes. Yeah. Hal Holbrook from uh, yeah. so the, here's nice the original cool. program. Wow, that. that is cool. Uh, 1959. That says program week of uh, November 23rd, 1959. Hal Holbrook in uh, Mark Twain tonight. Aguirre Theater. Hey, oh, Gary wow. and Mason. Yeah. I, I have a whole there. stack of these. Mob mint condition. Was he? What were you going to say, John? I'm going to think of the movie. I, I got a stack about that big. I mean, from working at, you know, the Fillmore and the Warfield. Mm -hmm. oh. I got, you know, they used to always give posters out. So I, I got a stack about that big of different shows. I have, I have the first uh, 20, and I have them bound oh. in a book, of the first 20 National Lampoon magazines. That's, that's very popular on the ground. Including yeah, one yeah. one copy of the Abby Hoffman episode. Oh, uh, anything with Abby Hoffman. Uh, no, but the Abby, Abby Hoffman Hoffman. one is even worth more than you think because oh. what happened was they printed it, and then before they, they could it. really ship it out to the, to the newsstands, the warehouse burnt down, and that issue never got distributed. But I laid my hands on it because I, I hung out with people at the National Lampoon, and they gave me a copy of it. I would never so get rid of it. I have one of the only it. copies of Abby Hoffman's Oh, I would something Lampoon. like that I would never get rid of. I would pass it. That's got to be worth something. something. Oh, yeah. Any autograph? What, what, what's that? Who, who you know who that autograph is? Oh, wait a minute. you got to get closer with it. it looks like a bean bag. A or a boot. Cowboy boot. Oh, I Those don't know. Boots are made for walking. Oh. Nancy Sinatra. Nancy Sinatra. Oh, wow. oh okay. Signed them. She was she was at the Fillmore a long time ago, and yeah. uh, I said, "Hey, you want to sign my boots?" How much she did said, you pay yeah. for? How much you pay for those boots? Um, God, I don't know. I bought it. these things were like probably thirty years old. They were they were um probably three four hundred bucks something like that. So Maybe. so now with the Nancy Sinatra signature, they're worth about two hundred, right? Yeah, no. Oh, Nancy's okay. still alive. Yeah. She was yeah. great. I love Nancy Sinatra. Yeah, she sang my favorite James Bond thing. Yeah. Mm. You only live twice. I like uh, that summer wine. Remember summer wine? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I I was never. Yeah, I don't have my collectibles with me. <laughs> <laughs> I have something that Brian might like. I, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, I was put inside a race car in the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. A friend of mine was a promoter for General Motors. Mm -hmm. And I got to ride around the track a couple of times with somebody I had no idea who he was. And it was Dale Earnhardt. And he signed a piston out of a race car. And I've been offered like $50,000 for the piston. Wow. wow. Oh, Lord. It's locked up somewhere. Hmm. So, well, anyway, so, 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 so you know, I mean, it was, that I, exciting. I, I think the, the what we've learned exactly. here tonight, folks, is that if you buy something you like, buy two of them. Yeah. And yeah. use one, and then put the other one away somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Like computers. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I got seven hundred and twenty-nine LPs here. Well, well I, I got rid of, but when I came out to New York, <laughs> I sold all my LPs. I got rid of most of my LPs. Um, uh, and I got, I got about $4,000 for them, something like that. You know? Your address, Charlie, I'll send you some more. <laughs> I had, I had, and how's the ones I got? <laughs> I had a couple that were worth something. And there was one that they I couldn't sell because they couldn't figure out what it was worth. And what it was was a test pressing. Of Tommy by the Who, Ooh. wow! Oh. And it uh, it on it it says um, it it's just a it doesn't even have anything on the label, but there's a like a mimeograph. Do you remember when they mimeograph stuff? A mimeograph page that says Tommy, uh, an opera, and then somebody yeah. put a, a carrot in there and put rock, rock in, opera, because yeah. we're going to just call wow. it an opera, and then it had a list of all the songs. Uh, and these were the test pressings. And I figured the test pressings are worth something. But this guy couldn't figure out what it would be worth. You know, 
So, uh, you know, I still have it. Is, I still yeah. have it, you know. So. Search on eBay. Maybe you can find what it's worth. Uh, uh, who, else has who knows? You know, who knows? Anyway. I've got Tommy. What? I've got the LP Tommy and Quadrophenia. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. I love all that. Yeah. I... You know, I have a uh, 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 Tommy. Tommy, uh, to, uh, the Who plays Tommy at the uh, Fillmore Auditorium poster, Ooh. and then it's signed in uh, a, a, a card that came with it. That's signed by Peter Townsend and the two managers of the of the Who. Uh, and to wow. Alex, many thanks. Yep. Whatever I have Damn it framed with that on there. And then it's also, it's very faint now, but it was signed in ballpoint by the guy who did the art. And nice. uh, I don't know how much that's worth. You, know, so. you ever see that? There's this great documentary about the, uh, the two guys who originally found the, the who, the, the managers. The Kit guys. Lambert and, uh, and uh, Chris, uh, 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 and Chris was it Chris? Chris it Stamp. Was, it was the Chris of Stamp. The actor, the well, Chris Stamp. Stamp. Chris Stamp and yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Stamp. Uh, Kit Lambert. Yeah, yeah Chris yeah. Stamp and Kit Lambert. Great and, documentary. And they signed it along with uh, mm -hmm. Peter Townsend. Cool. Uh, so uh, I have that. You know, I think that's worth something. And oh, uh, but you know, who you know, it's uh, and Ch uh, Tony will back me up on this. And Shecky's said this to me. He said, Yeah. These things are only worth what people are willing to pay for them. Absolutely. You know, so if you say, how much is it worth? Well, it's either worth $100,000 or it's worth 30 cents. It depends on what people want to pay for them. Yeah. So if you put it up on eBay and all of a sudden there's a bidding war and uh, you look like GameStop, you know. Yeah. Um, They're going to get in trouble, Alex. You, yeah, you, you, Robin Hood. Holy yeah. shit! Well, it's, it's, it's actually, what do you call Robin Hood that's in yeah, trouble. Yeah, Robin's going to get killed. Yeah. yeah, they're gonna go to jail. Forget that. Some, cool. some, something's wrong cool. there. They the stop people. Yeah. I mean, that I don't thing. understand exactly what went on. Can you explain it, Tony? I don't know the whole thing. My brother was explaining what I think it is. They were they were letting people buy, but they stopped people from selling. I think. And they were oh. they were letting people cash out. Was the other them. way around? Was it the other way around? Okay, but yeah. so it's almost like. So it they were letting people legal. sell, but they wouldn't let people buy. No, yeah, they, that forced the price down. Yeah, yeah. That for, oh, they, they, yeah, they did that on the same day. But, mm -hmm. but, but why was it going up so much? Well, because there was not because there was so much short stock that there wasn't a lot of stock available to be bought. And then all these <laughs> these small time investors got together on the the Reddit board and said, hey. Let's start buying this stock. And this one guy was counting it for months. And then the next thing you know, all the people that were short, they had to cover their shares because they saw the stock going up. Uh -oh. you know, if you've already sold it and the stock's going up, you got to cover it because you're losing money. So that just created this short squeeze and the stock took off. And and supposedly it's going to fall. No, <laughs> supposedly it fell, but then it went back <laughs> up again. Yeah. But it, it's going to crash eventually. <laughs> well, eventually, but as long as you're holding it now, if you decide to sell it right now and you bought it low, yeah, yeah. you're, yeah. you know, you're, you're, you're going to make, you know, make a shitload of money. Make a lot of money unless the Fed show up at your front door on Monday, you know. <laughs> I mean, usually when they stop a stock like that, the NASDAQ yeah. or the market would just shut it down <clears> buying or selling. They would just totally shut everything down. <laughs> We well, you know what they used to do. They don't do. They don't. don't do, they don't you know what they yeah. don't do anymore. Yeah, they would stop both. It, when, when the stock market, yeah. a couple of years ago, I remember the stock market suddenly surged upward. Uh, they would limit its surge. Yes. Yeah. They I would remember stop that. It. They would cap it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and and uh, but now they don't. That's why these numbers kept going up and up and up and up and up. I mean, now we're over what? Over almost up around thirty one thousand uh, thirty one thousand points. They were doing bad, Alex. Financially, they like most of them were closing up. Still yeah. are. They're not making. They still are. Again, doing the that. stock market That's, is another I mean, situation so of it's, it, it, worth fifty bucks. A, a stock is only worth what people are willing to pay for it. Yeah, exactly. You know? uh, it, so it's the yeah. biggest. What it really is is the biggest casino in the world. 
you know, mm-hmm. biggest legal casino in the world. And you know, Game, GameStop went up $131.40 today to $325. Mm. Now, I don't know if you, if any of you have ever been into GameStop, <laughs> but I have uh, only we, we once. Most of the it. time, I just walk past it, and I like playing games. I used to go into all the time and yeah. pre-order my stuff, and then they never, every time I pre-ordered Alex, they'd be like, oh, we didn't have enough copies coming. Yeah, but the thing is, Amazon. you could go on Amazon and get it cheaper. That's what I did then. I used to go there all the time for, like, the Sega games. I used to pre-order it. Yeah. And I used to go, this, oh, we didn't get enough in. It's just, you give me my money back. Once yeah. Amazon came in, I just went to them directly. Yeah, Amazon, it's much cheaper, you know. So. At least you don't be place a pre-order. He's going to get it to you. Hmm? Hey, did you guys hear the hmm. Amanda Gorman hmm. is going to be at the Super Bowl? Is she really? Oh, wow. Yeah. She's going to be reading at the Super Bowl. Oh, and okay. Do the poetry. Yeah, she's very she's good. Super Bowl she, poet. she was very good. Hmm. But, um, you know, my ad at my question was, where, where were we when she wasn't famous? Yeah, <laughs> you know she was still just as good, you know. Um, I think I mentioned to you last night about Howard, didn't I? About Howard Stern, what yeah. he said about yeah, him. yeah. I uh, I'm still looking for a copy of the goddamn quote or whatever. He quoted on. you again, Alex. I didn't. What? He said something again. I didn't listen to them this week. I was. Uh, oh no, he he did a, a thing where he said that I was. Uh, I don't know how it was put. Wait a minute, hold on a second. My friend uh, Walter Sabo mm. sent me a thing. Let me see. It's under nice letters. Uh, here we go. He said, he said, uh, and I quote, wait a minute. Come on. Where is it? Where is is it? Sabo still at uh, oh, uh, 70 or something like that? What? Is, that ABC or is he or still on the radio? Yeah, he's still, yeah, he's around. He does a show. Somewhere. Yeah, he said, um, he said um, uh, that this morning at 8.54, Howard Stern said, what a great host you are and how much he likes you. Oh, wow. Uh, <coughs> uh, it certainly is nothing like, like what he was I saying. I remember what I was going to say. It was nothing like he was saying about me for all those other years. I, you mm-hmm. know, but all of a sudden. Maybe uh, he had some good drugs. Could be either that, or maybe he's he's dying of something, and he suddenly wants to make uh, amends and amends. Amends his life. You know? <laughs> have you on the sh- Alex? If he asked you on the show, would you go? No, you'd have to. No, 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 no. Hey, Alex, I was I was going to say, I think I got a poster for one of those New Year's Eve uh, gigs that it was at the um, at you know one of those New Year's Eve gigs that you guys were doing. Yeah, at the yeah, Piles of Fine Arts. Yeah. I got one of those posters for the for that somewhere. Yeah, I have. I'm all stored somewhere. I have no yeah. idea where I put them. Yeah. Uh, um, I think I, I find it's hard to find you on the internet, Alex. What? I mean, well, are you kidding you know, me? Nah, I, you know when I look for interviews that you've done and stuff like the other one you did the other day and you put on Facebook when Larry King died. Mm-hmm. That was good. I saw yeah, that cool. one, but. It, I can't find a lot of stuff. Maybe it's I'm amazing because I have found so much of my past on the internet hmm. that I've been able to reclaim a lot of my old interviews just by uh, going. Maybe I ought to try a different bra- uh, internet search engine. Or just use Google. Just put in That's Alex Bennett. Using. It's an endless supply of stuff with well, Alex well, Bennett. Well, I have to look again. Yeah. No. Uh, in fact, I'm surprised every now and then somebody comes up with something else they found or that was suddenly some guy, you know, when he was a kid, he liked my show. So he recorded me on a, you know, a, a reel to reel tape recorder. And all of a sudden he puts it up on YouTube. And there I wow. am. You know, yeah. I found an old uh, Ramones interview that I yeah, did. I found that too, Alex. Really? Like I traded with somebody for that. Yeah. He had, I found it on radio message boards. He posted up with the Ramones. I said, I got to get that. I said, yeah, so, so I mean, it, 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 it's, uh, it's... And that was clear when he gave it to me. You know, it's definitely de- definitely a lot of stuff about me on there. Not that I care, you know. So the, it doesn't our, do our, me our, any good, you know. Our buddy I Phil says that. that he was your producer in the 70s. Yeah, for a short time. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Did you fire him, Alex, or no? No, I didn't fire him. Oh, uh, really? He just, he helped out. He was helping uh, out. So, and so he... Oh, our friend Phil? He said he had yeah. hair then, too. Huh? 
He said that you had a full head of hair then too. Yeah, I guess yeah. I did. I, I you know I eventually can't... when you were born. <laughs> yeah, well, he first knew me in New York City. You know, really? it goes back that far. Yeah. He said sometime in the early seventies yeah. is when he met you. But anyway, um, um, you know, I, if How uh, Howard asked me to be on a show, would I go on? Yeah, maybe just to plug this. You know, I mean, that's the only reason I do it. If you tell him, I, I, imagine if he called into the again, yeah, like to the live show, that'd be better. The last time I listened to him, he's afraid to leave the house because of the. Uh, he says on the radio because of the whole pandemic. And we're just as happy he isn't. So you know, I mean, it's. Uh, I, he, listen, I'm afraid to leave the house. I know, I don't. Yeah, that. that's why. How I about you, Jeff? Hair. You're afraid to leave the house, aren't you? Who, me, Jeff. I, Jeff. Oh, I Jeff, don't leave. Huh? I don't go anywhere. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And uh, how about how about how about uh, how about you, John? You well, I saw you were out on your skateboard or something the yeah, other day. I, I have to go out sometime, but but I, you know I don't drive anywhere. I just I you know I just keep. Keep to keep away from people and keep my mask mm. on. It's very cold now, so I decided just to take a drive with a car, mm -hmm. just to get it warmed up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and uh, get the oil around and whatever. And and I didn't go anywhere, and I just went around a couple of places and came back. Never got off. Never stopped. You know, and I was in the middle of nowheres. Well, nobody bothered me. Yeah, well, I'm too close. That was that was a big day, you know. My feeling is, well, you got the shot, right? Uh, Monday. Oh, you're getting the shot Monday. Monday. You know, uh, it, it it you know we're down. Some of us are down to the to the uh, to the end of the what can we call it down to the wire on this. Yeah. And the we don't want one. it to screw up. You know, we, we, yeah. we, we uh, and even at that, you only have 95% protection and knowing me, I'll get the other 5%, you know, you know what they yeah, said about this, you know, serious. I hate talking about this all the time, but it won't be severe though, but this Johnson and Johnson, yes. number one, I wouldn't want it for one reason. It only mm. protects you 70%, maybe 65. All right. Yeah. But what it does do, what it does do that the other two don't do is let's say you come down with COVID and they shoot you up with this Johnson and Johnson, it will sometimes mitigate the severity oh. of the yeah. attack. Well, they think they think the other two, the Moderna and the Pfizer, will do the same thing. Really? Yeah, I mean, why put out a, a, a vaccine that doesn't prevent you from getting really sick if you get sick? No, 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 no. But it, it, it no, it, it, what they're saying is, let's say, you come down with COVID. You haven't had anything, okay? Right. And th then they give you the Johnson and Johnson. It may lessen the severity. Oh, right? while you actually have COVID. While you have COVID, yeah. yeah. But you're oh, not going to die. That's what. Yeah. The, that's yeah. what. That's, that's what Johnson that's and Johnson. The only thing they're willing to say. That's what Johnson and Johnson is claiming. Right. And I they, think uh, they give you free band aids too. So, <laughs> so, well, what I, I was my yeah. But you, you know that news came out today, Alex, and my Johnson and Johnson stock went down by five and a half dollars. So well, my Johnson so. just goes down. <laughs> <laughs> Johnson and Johnson. Your Johnson, my Johnson. What happened? It went down five percent. Why did it go down five percent? Five and a half dollars a share. Wow. Yeah. Why? Yeah, it's but they don't even produce it. Because it's a stock market. I don't know. Yeah, why. who knows? Stocks go up and down. But uh, you it know, used to be a customer. It, well, it actually went down six dollars and three cents to one hundred and sixty-three thirteen. Why? I have no idea. They had great news tonight about their. There was I saw something that said the investors were looking for eighty percent efficiency, and because it's only sixty-five, you know, uh, it went down because <clears throat> the whole stock market went down. Everything was down. Everything yeah, was down that. today, yeah. supposedly. Yeah. But ours is up. <laughs> so, so Alex, I'll ask this question. Wait a minute. Yes, Jeff. Jeff wants to ask me a question. It's to call right. it's, Here we go. It, on Monday. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to get injected. Yeah. Now, what happens if they gave me the Johnson and Johnson? No, you won't get the Johnson and Johnson. You won't get it. Hasn't I been know you can't. Oh, it's, it's only going to be for two weeks. It's maybe. not. No, it's not available yet. It won't be. I know, I even even yeah. when they okay right. it, it's going to be. It was. 
What? Would Would you recommend it? Or no, not recommend I recommend. Uh, well, well, no. You know a lot about this, um, uh, Alan. What would you say? Uh, I would say I I, I would uh, if it was approved is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. It's not yeah. been approved, but if they approved it, if the FDA approved it. Yeah. Um, if you had a choice between that and the Pfizer Moderna, I would take the Pfizer Moderna because it's better protection. But yeah. but if if oh, what the hell? You're actually got some. You have the vision. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My son is like. If the Pfizer and Moderna was not around, the Johnson and Johnson would be considered pretty good, since the flu shot in an average year is between. Yeah. You know, 40 and 50 percent. Mm -hmm. Now, the flu doesn't usually kill people. It kills some people, but not, you know, mm -hmm. everybody like this stuff. So I would take the Johnson & Johnson if that's all that was available. If that was all that was available, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But if, okay. if the other two were available, I'd take one of the other two. Yeah. Yes. So too. you wouldn't do it rather than make the decision to wait until you could get one of the other ones? Um, I would say that at this point, I wouldn't play with time. Mm. You know? there, yeah, yeah. So, so what the CDC and, and the FDA are saying right now is they're not sure if you can mix the Johnson and Johnson type of vaccine with Moderna and Pfizer type of vaccine. They're not. They're not sure what what will happen. Um, and so, there's the you know because some people were saying well. If I get the Pfizer and then uh, four or five weeks, three weeks later, whatever, I'm due for my next shot and Johnson & Johnson is out, can I take that instead? And the answer right now is no. no way. Well, is it no because it doesn't enhance anything or is it no because it would be detrimental? Yeah, they, they just don't know. You know, so in other words, in other words, in other words, we enough. are the biggest bunch of lab rats known to mankind, right? <laughs> Got that right. Just a bunch of old we people. Are. Yeah. Well, only us old people. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we, yeah. Charlie's right. Now, uh, 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 Trucker Steve, are you, you're getting it, aren't you, the, uh, the the shot? Yeah, I haven't booked an appointment yet, though, but yeah. eventually I will. I would have been in doctor yeah. and I would have yeah. been in a bad situation for me. Yeah, but anyway, so yeah, whatever. I eh, forget about it. I don't want to talk about that anymore. It just got it's got me so upset. It's got me so upset that I'm waiting 38 days for my next <laughs> shot. Change the subject. Change the subject. Hey, uh, talking about documentaries, how was the uh, the comedy store one? I, I want to watch. It's that, very good. Is that it's very. It's very. very good? It's okay. very good. Yeah. 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 Uh, be in the world. What is that? What is that audio? That's my son talking really loud on his. Uh, playing the game because we have to share this room. I keep oh. telling him just <laughs> tell, tell him to shut the. F I, I, I keep <laughs> telling him he doesn't care. He doesn't listen to any, he doesn't listen to anything. I tell him. Look at listen to that. He doesn't care. Oh, who's he, well, son, who's he talking to? It's somebody on the internet. Oh, I don't he's know. got the mic on. The thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can. Well, are you are you near the Wi-Fi? Maybe you can shut off his Wi-Fi or something. Oh, well, he's hardwired in. Oh, well, you can pull the plug. Yeah, I can do How that. Yeah, it's it's hardwired. It's 18. coming out of the router, you know. He's 18. Well, yeah, you know, you, you know, Ray, if you pull the plug, we'll probably get to see the first homicide on the on the <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'd probably get your numbers up. <laughs> yeah. My, my kid my kid's playing Valorant. Valorant? Valorant? Okay, I don't know what that is. My daughter. Hey William, you playing Valorant? It's a competitive he only hears me when he wants to. Like, if I say something he needs to hear, and he could have like three headphones on, he'll hear it. You know, I could be whispering, but then when I, I, he says something that I can't hear you, Fallout 76, he plays a lot. A lot Typical 18 year old. Yeah. yeah. The hearing of a, like what has good hearing. You know what happens is I, I like I like playing games because they they're you know they are relax they're relaxing for me or they're not exactly relaxing because I'm exhausted when I'm through, but. Uh, I, I found this game I really like lately called The Last of Us Part 2. Mm. Um, and uh, I, I get to a certain point on it, right? And I got like towards the middle of the game, right? And you got it's one of, it's not a, it's, it's, yeah, it's a shooter game, but it's also you got to do this and you got to do that and you've got to sneak past things and you got to do, you know, it's, it's an, it's not an action game as much as it's a play, a role-playing game, okay? 
Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, it's, it's kind of like a Tomb Raider or any of these other games where the, you do a variety of things. And I like the game, but the problem is on that one, I got to a point where I got to this one thing and I can't for the life of me get past it. Oh. And I just then I just lose interest. Okay. So then I went on, I got the Last of Us Part One that came out a couple of years ago. The same thing happened to me. I got about halfway through the game and then I hit a point where I can't get past a certain point. And it just frustrates me and I just go, ah, fuck it. You know, I'll wait till the next game comes out and I'll buy that one. Get halfway there's some through. Ten year old, there's some 10 year old that flies <laughs> right by that section. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I, well, you know what I do? I go online and there's this yeah. guy named Rad Brad who plays all these games. And I, by the way, I enjoy watching him play the games, right? And he, I'll watch him play the game and see how he gets past this certain point. And I go, he just went blah 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 blah, and he's through it. And meanwhile, I can't. I, I'm I'm dead every time I I tried it like a hundred times. I couldn't get past this certain point, so I I gave up, you know. But what were you laughing about, Jeff? You don't play these I, games, do you? No, I don't play those. But I, I think if you, if you were like about 65 years younger, you'd be okay. I don't know if I'd be okay. <clears throat> I don't know if I'd be okay. I mean, it, I it, think there's a certain youngster <clears throat> strategy for this stuff that works better. No, I'm the same today as I was then. I I have a complete. I have nothing to do with my miserable life. And so I can spend hours playing these games. And when I was younger, I had nothing to do with my miserable life, and I could spend hours playing those games. You know, only when I was growing up, there weren't those games. Our games were, let's see, tag, hide and seek, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, cowboys and Indians, cowboys and cowboys Indians. and Indians. Those were the, those were the games we played. I, I would think your favorite, Alex, would be Doctor with your girlfriend. Oh, Doctor was always fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a good I game. never played Doctor. I played Flipper. I played Flipper with a girl. What Flipper? What, what's Flipper? Well, I was like a dolphin, and she was like saving me in a swimming pool. When oh, I was that like sounds seven. fun. Yeah, I was in love with her. I was yeah, seven, man. I think. Yeah. Well, that's not as much fun as you playing. Were eight, playing. She was nine? Playing yeah, doctor. she was like eight or nine. I was seven or and eight. And now, yeah, ladies was... and gentlemen, since our lives are... Uh, are are just toast anyway, and we have nothing to do with it, uh, of any meaning. Um, uh, John Larkin will now play his clarinet. <laughs> no, not for five minutes. Go, John. <laughs> oh, actually, uh, I, I, I can almost get the high notes. Watch, I can do like a scale, but mm. uh, but. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, it's Girl, really. My glass uh, just broke. It's really. Sorry. Oh, oh, my God. God. It's fucking hard. It's the hardest instrument in the. It's a hard instrument. Oh, it's a hard play. instrument, especially uh, you mm -hmm. know the reed, and you got to get the reed good and wet. And, yeah. You know. What I did is that my father, uh, I, you know, paid for lessons for me musically because my father's a musician. We were a musical family, and I mm -hmm. somehow didn't play anything. So he then, uh, first he tried to teach me the violin, and that I didn't play very well. I had a baby violin when I was a baby. It was about this big. Uh, and, um, but I couldn't get that. So then uh, he, uh, I said, well, tr trombone sounds like a good idea. So he got me a, a trombone, and he got me somebody in the band that he knew to help give me trombone lessons. But... I was too lazy. I didn't like holding the thing up. Okay? That was too much work for me. And and the only thing I liked about the trombone is I liked playing it enough so that I could then open the spit valve and spit would come out. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, so we gave up on the trombone. What else did I try? But finally, then I taught myself to play the piano a little bit. You know, I could play a little bit of piano. That was about it, yeah. you know. But, but finally, one day, you know, after I got into the business, my father said, well, he said you never learned an instrument, but y you play your instrument better than I play mine, you know. Well, that's because you were younger. No, but my instrument was radio. 
you know, yeah. you know, he says you play a turntable better than I play <clears throat> violin. So I, I always thought, you, uh, huh? Alex, how old, how old were you when he passed away? I think I was uh, maybe like 23, something like wow. that. Maybe. Oh, wow. Yeah. So yeah he, died, he, he, died, he died. So he, he saw you at, where were you, where were you working around then? I was just working small little radio stations. I, my father died while I was in, it was while I was in the Navy. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. So I had done some radio around. I mean, he knew that, you know, he helped mm -hmm. me get my first job, my first professional job. In, in Reno, no, Reno, Nevada. Oh. The one at KTIM was, uh, came later, oddly enough. Um, and, um, oh, he knew a guy who owned a radio station in Reno, Nevada, so I got a job up there. And, he um, shipped you up there. <laughs> yeah, but he never saw me really get well-known or anything like that. He died what at, was your he died at 59. The, uh, what? What was your job in the Navy? I was a journalist third class. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the reason I became a journalist, uh, it was a good reason. Number one, you do broadcasting as a journalist. Right. But the other reason was is that there were only something like 79 journalists in the entire Navy. Wow. And uh, only two or three of them were on a ship. Hmm. So I went, that's for me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> So. No stars and stripes, huh? Yeah, but I, I, I left with, I was a third a, a journalist third class, and, you know, <laughs> after two years in the Navy, and then I was out, so. Because yeah. well, it was the so uh, Navy Reserve, so I only had to do two years. What? And, and what's your joke, right? Don't you say no, no ships ever went past? Oh, 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 I, I, then I went, I worked at the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, uh, and uh, as a seaman apprentice for most of it, I finally Did they got have ships then. And and the thing was, well, no. What I said was, is my big joke is that uh, I was in Hollywood at the Armed Forces Radio and Television Service, and you may laugh at that, but no enemy planes ever got past Santa Monica Boulevard on my watch. <laughs> you know, so, so. there we go. Yeah. That's all the pretty goody. It's always an oldie but goody joke. I think I've been doing that one since you listened to me on radio in San Francisco, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so it was, you know. Hey, we're slowly running out of time here tonight. We're slowly running out of time if you believe that the whole world's coming to an end within a week and a half. Uh, mm. You know, every week they come up with a new mutation of the coronavirus. And then before we're, I mean, you're going to have to get a shot every week. <laughs> yeah, need a booster. yeah, yeah. They, we're, st we're still in the cushion. I'll take a Fauci, Fauci says we're still in the cushion of the, you know, yeah. the virus yeah. for yeah. testing. So and for I, I'm, the I, vaccines. I, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not planning on it clearing up anytime soon. I'm. Mm. I know that even though I'm gonna get the shot, I ain't going out. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know. Stay safe. Hey, listen. Uh, this has been a lot of fun tonight. I hope everybody listening to us, those of you who are. Uh, been very low listening levels lately. I don't know why. I think everybody just is, you know, we're not talking politics and we're not getting into all of that. We probably, should, some night here, we should talk about what's going on with, with Biden and, you know. Uh, we need to fight more. We need to fight more. <laughs> well, let me just say to fuck Bring all of you, okay? On. Fuck you, <laughs> Trucker Steve. <laughs> fuck you, Charlie <laughs> Wallace. <laughs> fuck you, Brian Neary. Alan, uh, go you blow <laughs> yourself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, John Larkin, screw you. Uh, Tony, uh, I like Tony. Uh, Jeff, uh, 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 go smell a fart. Uh, let me see here. And Ray Johnson and Johnson Jr. <laughs> Ray Renati, thank you so much. Everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you. Okay, there they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry for that uh, that little interruption we had in the show. I don't know what that was. I don't know how it affected itself out there, but I know your picture probably went uh, went froze up or something like that. Anyway, uh, uh, we'll figure out what that was all about, although we may never find out. Uh, we're going to get out of here. John, uh, Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection. Uh, Gabnet Live is the uh, address you use for... Uh, Skype, which is the thing he uses. I'll see you again uh, 
Monday with the pop-up show at 4 o'clock and see you again next Tuesday night at nine at 10.30 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, in the meantime, as always, uh, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, uh, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, uh, it's really hell out there. So wear a mask and stay safe, okay? We need every audience member we can get. Bye!